Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you five unassigned key commands in Logic. These are specifically commands for composers, creators, and beat makers. Commands that will make your workflow uh, faster and more efficient. And I just think these are really cool commands that should be assigned to keyboard shortcuts by default. Now, if you don't already know this, in Logic, you can press Option K and this will bring up your key command assignments dialog. This will show you every single key command that Logic has. So essentially every function from every menu in Logic. And what you'll find is a lot of these do not have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them. So these are commands that you'd have to go select manually. You have to go digging through a menu somewhere. Now, to make sure that I'm starting from scratch, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select initialize all key commands and I won't save. So now I'm back to the default key command set uh, that comes stock with Logic. Now, my very first one I wanna show you is slice at transient markers. What this allows you to do is it allows you to take a loop like this with uh, very you know noticeable transients in it and it will detect those transients and slice at the transients. Normally, in order to do this, you actually have to use flex time and do a bunch of other stuff. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make this super quick and easy. We wanna be able to instantly chop up any loop or sample at transients. Okay, so I'll hit Option K to bring up my key command assignments and let's search up slice. And there is slice at transient markers. You can either use learn by key label or by key position. The difference is with certain keys that have the same name, like for example, the numbers on the number pad versus the numbers on the number row, you can actually use those as two separate distinct key positions if you learn by key position, whereas learning by key label is going to go by the, the actual label that's on the key. So I'm gonna use key position for all of these, but you can use key label if you prefer. Um, so I'm gonna learn by key position and the shortcut I'm gonna use for this is option shift command S. So there we go, option shift command S. Let's turn that off. And now all I have to do is select that region, use that shortcut option shift command S, and you can see it's chopped up everything at the transient markers, just like that. So we can go in here, we can pull out different samples. Uh, we can, you know, reorder the samples, you know, resequence the beat, um, you know, build a new loop out of it if we like. Okay, this next one is flashback capture and play. Um, so most of y'all are already familiar with flashback capture. Basically, Logic is always monitoring your MIDI input and your audio input so that you can grab recordings um, even when you don't hit record. So for example, if I just play around with an idea here. And I'm like, okay, that's a cool idea. Uh, let me go grab that. So you hit Shift R. And what that will do is it will recall, you know, that last MIDI recording that you played, even if you didn't hit record. So that's a really cool feature of flashback capture. What I'm going to do is combine flashback capture with the play function. So let's just search up flashback and you'll see there's shift R for capture, uh, flashback capture as recording. And then here we go. Flashback capture is recording and play. So let's learn by key position. I'm gonna use option shift F for this, F for flashback. And let me just play in something here. Shift option or option shift F. So this is just a really quick and easy way to get ideas down and immediately hear them.
Option Shift F. And then you go into that uh, MIDI data, edit it, get it on the grid, whatever you want to do with it. It's just a really quick way to come up with ideas and instantly hear those ideas without needing to play to a click, without needing to you know set the cycle range or do anything like that. You can just play completely freely from the click and get your ideas down. Okay, so this next one is really helpful for quantizing MIDI data. So I have to think to myself, what are the most common quantization values I use? Typically, it's going to be quarter notes, eighth notes, and 16th notes. And so if I can quickly store each of these quantization settings in a key command, in a, a shortcut, this keeps me from having to even use the quantization menu most of the time. Um, so you can do this in logic. Let's go up to key commands, edit assignments. That's how you can get there as well if you don't uh, use option K. And let's search up quantize and you'll see quantize and then different note values. So let's do quarter note, eighth note, and 16th note. You could maybe also throw in a triplet value if you wanted to. Um, but let's just do eighth note and uh, I'll just do quarter note and eighth note, but you can, you know, you can learn any of them if you want. Um, so quarter note, I'm going to learn by key position. I'm going to use shift and then four on my number pad. And then for my eighth note, I'm going to use shift and eight on my number pad. Okay. Do I have any 16th notes in here? I don't think I do. Okay. All right. So I've learned those two. And now what I can do is I can select individual notes if I want, and I could just hit shift four and it automatically quantizes those notes to quarter notes. Um, if I need to quantize eighth notes, like here and over here, actually that one's not an eighth note, but uh, this one is right here, that's an eighth note. So we'll do shift eight, bam, we've quantized to an eighth note. Over here, these are all quarter notes, so shift four. Oh, no, they're not. We do have an eighth note there, so shift eight. There we go. Um, and then we've got this here. Let's do shift eight here as well. You don't necessarily have to go through section by section, you could just select all, determine what the lowest, uh, you know, value is, rhythmic value is here, it's eighth note, and then just quantize everything to an eighth note. And the great thing about this is this will work here in the piano roll, but it'll also work out here in the tracks area. I can just select that region, hit shift eight, and everything is quantized to an eighth note now. Yeah, so you could, you know, try out different combos of your most common quantization values, quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, maybe throw in a triplet, you know, um, like a triplet eighth note or something like that. And right there, you have your, your four most common quantization values saved to shortcuts instead of having to um, use the quantization menu. Okay, so this next one is actually multiples, kind of like the last one with the quantization values. This has to do with the transform window. And if you're not familiar with the transform window, you can access this by going to functions, MIDI transform, and then choose a transform preset. Now, basically what the transform window does is it allows you to apply batch MIDI operations to selected MIDI notes. So for example, with fixed velocity, we are taking the velocity of all notes and we're fixing that to 100. So I could select all of these notes, click operate, and now all of these notes are set to a velocity of 100. But let's say that we wanted to store this as a user preset and then recall it with a key command so we never have to even open the transform window. You can do that. Um, so what we can do is click here we go down to create new transform set. So click there, and then I'll call this, uh, we'll say all, and we'll say fix to 100. Data byte two is gonna be velocity. And then I can uh, give it a name, so I'll just call this velocity fix 100. And then now, 
that preset can be recalled right there. That's gonna be called preset one. Let's make another one. Let's go up here, let's select create new transform set. We'll say all velocities will be set to a range between 60 and 100. I do this a lot because sometimes when I play in on the keyboard, I'll have notes that are really loud uh, or some that are like really soft. And so this takes like your loudest notes and your softest notes and does this to it. So you're setting like a velocity limiter to the top end and to the bottom end and sort of bringing it in. So we'll call this um, velocity range 60 to 100. And then let's do one more. Let's do one more. There's a preset in here um, that's commonly used called humanize. And what this does is it randomizes the position, the velocity, and the length of notes by 10 ticks uh, or by 10 velocity values. So let's set that up again. But this time um, for my preset, I'm not going to use the length randomization. So we're going to make the position and the velocity be randomized by 10. So let's create a new transform set position. We're going to randomize by 10 ticks. In fact, we'll go a little bit further than that, like 15 ticks. And then for velocity, we're going to randomize by, let's go 12, right? And then we'll just give this a name. We'll just call this uh, velocity and position humanize. Okay, so I've created three transform presets. How do we get these on key commands? Let me show you that. Okay, so I'm back to my original MIDI here. Let's hit option K. Let's search up transform. There we go. And you can see apply transform user preset one, two, and three to events. And I'll make uh, the shift option one, shift option two, and shift option three. I was originally gonna do just shift one, two, three for these, and then shift option for the quantize uh, presets, but you know, it's up to you what you, you know, set your key commands to. Sometimes shortcuts will be already taken and you'll just have to take a moment and find one that's actually available. Um, so shift option one, two, and three. So let's select these notes. Shift option one on my number pad fixes all the velocities to 100. Shift option two, that creates a velocity limiter. So you can see all of the notes, these blue notes, these came up and all of these red orange notes, they come down, right? So now everything's sort of uh, green and orange, uh, orange on the top end. So we created a range there. And then what we can also do is humanize. So shift option three, and you can see, let me just kind of zoom in little bit more there, shift option three. All of the velocities, all of the positions have been randomized slightly. Okay, this last one a lot of people have commented on in the past, um, and this is separate pattern region by kit piece. So if you're using Drum Machine Designer and you're using this with um, the step sequencer, sometimes it can be a little troublesome uh, to work in the step sequencer with the full kit in there. And also, as you may or may not be aware of, each kit piece in Drum Machine Designer has a separate aux track. And that auxiliary track inside of the DMD uh, track stack, you can access here. But in some cases, you're not using all of these. So if you want to kind of take your entire pattern and break it down to its individual components, its individual kit pieces, sometimes that can make arrangement um, a, a bit easier, you know, if you only want to use certain kit pieces in your beat. So once you start, you know, you get your beat kind of build out in the uh, in the step sequencer, um, you can right click, you can go down to convert, and then you can select separate pattern region by kit piece. If this is something you're going to do a lot, let's make a key command out of it. And I'll just do separate. There we go. 
and then we can do separate pattern uh, region by kit piece, learn uh, key position, and I'm gonna use option shift command P. And there it is. So now if I click on that and hit option shift command P, it takes each kit piece in that pattern and separates it down to a separate track and it puts it on its own aux track. So the kick one goes to the kick one track. The snare two goes to the snare two track. And so what you can do is you can go through here and you can see the ones that are not used and you can delete them. And this may not be something you do right up front as you're, you know, you start working on a beat, but it may be something you do later on once you've settled on the kit pieces you're using for your beat. Because in a lot of cases, you're not using every single kit piece, right? But what this does is it gives you the ability to very easily, uh, by the way, command R will repeat, to come in here and say, okay, let's start off with just hi-hat and the kick. Um, and then let's bring in, you know, the hi-hat and, uh, you know, one of these snares. And then we want to, you know, maybe go back to just the hi-hat. And so this can make arranging your percussion uh, a little bit easier because you can kind of move things around by their kit piece rather than having to deal with the entire, you know, drum pattern up here at the top. You know, maybe this is like an intro. This is like a secondary intro. And then the, maybe the main beat comes in. And, you know, that's not my favorite snare. So maybe let's go into quick sampler here. So here's one I like. Let me just pull it in from splice, drag and drop it in there. And of course you can change the, uh, you know, the root key and everything here. And of course, you can do all of that without this key command. It's just that when you use this key command to separate your patterns into individual uh, com uh, components or kit pieces, it can make the arrangement process a lot easier because you can think about, you know, just what, like, what is just the kick drum doing? What is just the snare drum doing? And you can come into these and you can uh, add in new notes just like so without having to worry about affecting the entire uh, drum pattern. Okay, so those are five of my favorite uh, key commands for composing, creating, and beat making that are unassigned by default in Logic Pro. Let me know in the comments below if there are other ones that you like to create custom assignments for, and perhaps I will do a follow-up video with five more. If anything, there are more unassigned key commands than there are assigned key commands in Logic. So there's plenty of room here for optimization and customization. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.